Well, we say good evening. Good to see each and every one of you. We're growing. Miss Judy's here. <laughs> we appreciate each one of you. We really do. All right. We've been studying the book of Job. Tonight we're going to look at chapter 3. This is a very, very important chapter. Because Job and his friends had sat for seven days and nights without a word. And then Job broke silence. So let's look at, uh, starting with verse 1, chapter 3. Now after this, after that seven days, opened Job his mouth and cursed his day. And Job spake and said, Let the day perish wherein I was born, and the night in which I was said, it was said, There is a man child conceived. Let that day be darkness. Let not God regard it from above, neither let the light shine upon it. Let darkness and the shadow of death stain it. Let a cloud dwell upon it. Let the blackness of the day terrify it. For as for that night, let darkness seize upon it. Let it not be joined unto the days of the year. Let it not come into the a number of the month. Lo, let that night be solitary. Let no joyful noise come therein. Let them curse it that curse the day. Who are ready to raise up their morning? Let the stars of the twilight thereof be dark. Let it look for light, but have none. Neither let it see the dawning of the day. And let me stop right there. Let's open a word of prayer. Thank you, Father, for this teaching. It is very strong, Lord. I think this is one of the strongest chapters in the book of Job. Because it really shows how downcast he really was. Suffering. The feeling, the hurt from all his loss. And yet, Lord God, we know that you were right there with him. Job wasn't alone, just like we are not in our hard times. So I pray, help us to understand this. And we praise you and love you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How much can any person take without really getting down in the gutter that Job was in? Think when everything is taken away from us. Maybe we had a wonderful life like Job did. And all of a sudden it's gone. Job didn't understand it. See, we have been given what went on in heaven. The way the devil came and he, he asked God to let him strike Job. But God laid the conditions. Can I tell you something? When you heard in this life, your God is going to lay down the conditions. And it's going to be for your and my good because he's trying to train us on something. He's trying to show us what true life is all about. Now, this, this chapter has been titled Unhappy Birthday because it, in it Job curses the day of his birth, but he did not catch this, please. He did not curse God. Even his wife tried to get him curse God and die. Job said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay with my God. But I don't understand it. Why was he even born? Why did, why did God even allow me to take the first breath? I should have died in birth, childbirth. I should have not even been thought of. But God says, Job, be still and know that I'm God. Folks, the devil is our enemy. He will try everything in his power to down us, to get us to curse God, to get us to walk away from God. But the true Christian has got their eyes upon God. Hey, they're going to stay with God. They're going to stay right with God because He is our only way. It don't matter what comes along. God is still with us. He's still our God. And He's looking for the best for us. So, Will we trust Him? Will we do as Job did? Will we say, no matter what comes my way, I'm going to stay with God. His wife, why do you retain your integrity? Curse God and die. You reckon there's people out there in the world that does that? Something hard comes along, something maybe sad comes along. Well, I'm through with God. I give Him a try and it ain't working. Wait on God. Wait on Him.
to act. It may take time. But God, he's out for the good of his people. But he's not complaining. He just don't understand. Why can't I just lay down and die? You know, when life gets so tough, so hard. Well, I'm sure there's all kinds of people like to say, I would just like to die. But God says, wait on me. Just wait on me. Let me show you the goodness of God. Let me show you what God is working now. If, if Job had died there, he would have still been God's person. He just went to a better place in the presence of Almighty God. But God wasn't in that. It was not God's will that Job would die in his troubles because he had something good. When we get to the end of, of Job, you're going to see God gave him twice as much that he had beforehand. Twice as much. I wonder what Job thought then. Whoa, now whoa. I can't believe this. Has God ever surprised you with his goodness? I know he has me. I know he has us. He is out for our good. But there's a condition. They that wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They'll mount up with wings as eagles. They'll run not be weary and they'll walk and they won't faint. That's what God can do. That's what God wants to do in our lives. So Job, he's really in a hard place here. Don't know what to do. Oh, Lord God, will you just let me die? I wish I'd never been born. Now that's foolish talking. We know that. But if we... We're in that kind of trouble. What would be our, our thoughts? Would we say, I'm happy with this God? I don't think so. Job, Job was suffering. He was suffering like no other man other than maybe the Lord Jesus Christ. But he couldn't understand. He couldn't understand. I think about those uh, families that have sent their boys off to war. And many, many of them didn't come back. How does that family deal with that? Think about it. There is my loved one that has gone to war and lost their life. How am I as a father or a mother, how am I supposed to handle that? That's hard. It really is. There's only one answer. Go to God on your knees. Say, Lord, I don't know what's going on. I don't know how to face this. But I know you are God. I know that you're out for my good. I know you'll bring good out of this in your timing, but not in mine. So that's what we have to do. We have to trust him fully and completely. Everything that we do has to be done in faith in Almighty God. He mentions that at death he would be at rest. That's an out. You see what he's saying? I just wish I could be in death. I would rest then. I would lay in that grave or wherever, and I wouldn't have to worry about all the things I'm going through. God says that's not a way out. And Christian, that's not a way out for us. Either we're going to follow God or we're going to follow our own path. and It'll bring harm and hurt, hurt other people. So we must, we must trust God. No more pains. If I can die, just no more pains. No more troubles. You know, God's still in control. I don't care what we go through. Hardships, hard times, losses. God is still God on the throne of heaven. And he's still looking for the very best of his people. Do we understand God all the time? No. We can read his word, but... You know, it's when you get in those hard times that the verses and chapters of His Word just jumps out at you. Been there and done that. Don't know why, Lord, I'm doing this, but I'm going to learn from it. And another thing, in our hard times, we can grow in our relationship with Almighty God. When everything's going good, do you know you're more apt not to grow than if things are hard? Why? Because we're trusting ourselves. Everything's good. 
God, God, I, I, I love you, but that right now, everything's so good, I don't, uh, I don't need you. Oh, but that's the very time we need him. That's when we need to look up to him. Go back to verse 10. He says, because it shut not up the doors of my mother's womb, nor hid sorrow from mine eyes. Why didn't I die in childbirth? Why died I not from the womb? Why died I, did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly that was born? He wanted to be born dead. A little late, didn't he? I mean, here he is, a grown man. Well, he's already had ten children. Of course, uh, Satan took them. But at the same time, Job just give God a chance. Give him time to work. Is that easy for us to do? No, it's not. But it is the best way. It is the way of faith. It's a way of trusting in Almighty God. And let him work in us. He thought death would be a blessing to him. You know, I've never been, I've never been in the place that Job was in. But when we get so down, so hurting, so much, don't we think, wouldn't we think of death? I'd like to just get out of this. Just get away from it. God says, be still and know that I'm God. I've got a plan. I've got a purpose. You know what? God already knew the outcome. It took a while. He knew the outcome. Job suffered because Satan asked the Lord, let me strike you. He'll curse you to your face. That didn't happen, did it? God knew that. Do you believe God knows you like the back of his hand? He knows your thoughts, your desires. He knows everything about you and me. And he's out for our good. But when he puts us in a place that we hurt, I can tell you what that is. That is a place of training. Almighty God, he has to use hard times sometimes to get us to see Truly, that we are dependent upon Him. I can't do what God does, but I can wait on Him. And I eventually, I'll find His very best answer that I never could have thought of when I was in that despair, a hurry. When I was that way, I could not. I could not see what God was all about. But oh, look what He's done. I'd say every one of us has got a story to tell. When we think about the hardships, we think about the hurts, the pains, we've got a story to tell. And that becomes that becomes a part of what we really are. We've been given a testimony even through the school of hard knocks. Now, not everybody understands that, and I, and I know that. Job's persecution came from the enemy. God allowed it. But he only let Satan go so far in the life of Job. Because God knew Job. Good chapter 1, he tells you he was a just man. He was a man, a perfect man. And that's not to say that he was perfect as a human, but he was blameless. Why? Because he had his heart set right with Almighty God. Even his children, they'd party. And he would sacrifice for them in case one of them sinned against God. Oh, my goodness. Do we have a good God? We know we do. If a little trouble comes our way, be still and know that he's God. Allow him to train us. Allow him to make us what we ought to be and what he's wanting to make us into. Because he's got work for us to do. He's got a plan, a purpose, and we have to look to him, trust in him. Let him guide us in a path of righteousness and do his work and his way. But you know what? It's so easy to get down when trouble comes our way. Woe is me. Why has this happened to me? Why do... 
Maybe other folks think he deserves it. Folks, don't listen to other people. Listen to Almighty God. He has the plan, the purpose, and he'll bring it to fruition in his time. He'll make all things better in his time. And that's what we're looking for. But we have to trust him. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finish for our faith. Job had been blessed by God graciously. He had all he needed. He had land. He had cattle. He had all those things in numerous amounts. But he trusted God. Now that's unusual in our day. How hard it is to get a rich person to believe in God? I'm not saying that there, there, there's not some. I'm just saying people put their faith, their trust in money. Will they trust God? Why do I need God? I've got everything I need. Oh, but they're setting themselves up. Because God will require our sins to us. We have to face it. At that judgment seat of Christ or that white throne judgment, all men will stand before Almighty God. Job had a deep connection with his God. He loved God. He served God. I, I got a feeling he trained his children in the ways of God, but now did they follow that? Now, God let Satan take those ten children. Oh, that had to be hard for Job. Think about that. Ten children. If we lost one, that'd be terrible, wouldn't it? Ten of them. But Job did not curse God. Boy, his wife wasn't any help either, was she? Curse God and die. You're not going to get Job to do that. Because he loved and worshipped his God. And that's what we all need to do. Folks, the closer we live to God, we'll be more apt to be attacked by the devil. He is anti-God. He don't want us to fall at the Lord God. But he wants us to be broken, curse God, say, I'm through with God. But where will that lead? Well, if a person's not a Christian, it'll lead to total everlasting destruction. But God, He is merciful. He's a loving God. He wants the best for each and every one of us. But we have to walk with Him. What do you do when hard times come your way? I mean, let's face it. At some time in our lives, we're going to face some hard times. We're going to face times and say, oh, goodness, what am I going to do now? Well, we know the answer is Christians. Be still and know that He's God. Wait on the Lord. He'll renew your faith. That's one thing that we saw in Brother Job here. He did not lose his faith in God. He did not blame God. He didn't understand it all. But he was God's man. He trusted his God, his Lord. So I ask myself, as I ask you, what do we do with those hard times? Now Job had fears. There's no doubt about that. I've been reading in verse 25 and 26, chapter 3. Let me read that for you. He says, For the thing which I greatly feared is come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. I was not in safety, neither had I rest, neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. Now, somewhere back there, Job, he had an inkling of thought, What if... Those are not so great words. What if? It should be what will God do. But what if? I would say that every one of us, at some time in our life, we've had some fears. What if this happens? What if this? What if my child goes bad? Or what if this, that, or another? What if I lose my job? Give it to God. Let Him train us. 
let him show us a stronger and a better way. That's what he wants to do. What's it going to take in the way of God striking us or bringing us down? What's it going to take to get our hearts or minds right on him? We get up in the morning and say, here I am, God. What do you want of my day? How can I please you and work for you? How can I serve you in a mighty way? I'm going to face hurting people out there. I'm going to face people that don't fear God. How do I handle all that? Many of them are vile. But God would say, trust me. Don't ever turn away from me. Because I've got the answer. Your every hurt, your every problem, your every need. I think this third chapter of Job is one of the strongest in that whole book. Because it shows, it shows Job's pains, his suffering, the heartaches. It shows all that. But he would not turn away from his God. Isn't that something? So it brings on the question to every one of us. How much we will take in the way of suffering? Will we wait on God? Or will we walk away and say, I'll do it myself? God wants to train us. He uses a school of hard knocks. I felt that myself. But it's all for our good. It's all for our growth as a Christian. It's all for us serving Him, honoring Him, and walking with Him. I find that very strange. The Bible says there He He never cursed God. He never said an ill word to God. He downed Himself, wish I'd been born dead, and all this stuff, but He never cursed His God. Folks, that's amazing. That's amazing. That is the type of Christian that we need to be. Lord, if you let hard times come upon me, I know you got me in the school of training. Maybe hard knocks, but I know that you want to make something great out of my suffering. And if I'll just stay in there and wait on you, I believe I'll receive your best. But what if I choose to go my own way? Job had a deep connection with his God. What would we do if we lost ten kids? I think about that sometimes. How would that how would that work in our lives? If we're truly Christian, I don't see how we can trust or curse God. Because all those promises he's given us in his word. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you always. Those are secure words that come from Almighty God. You know, He sees our pain. He feels our hurt. And yet He says, just a little more. Just a little more. Let me train you and get you to where you're going to say, Lord, whatever you see fit in my life, I know it's going to work for my good, and I want to commit all to you. I believe he wants to hear that. I believe he wants us to trust him all the way. How many years was Job in this? We're not really told. But we know there's about 42 chapters here. And it goes on through. Let me give you another thought too. He had three good friends that came from far away. And they came to console him. They felt his hurt and his pain. And yet, they turned against him. His wife turned against him. How deep can it get in Job's life? What do we do now, Lord? Everyone's against me. But I'm going to fear God. I'm going to walk with God. And I'm going to receive his best because I know he's going to bring me through this. That's called faith and trust, it it really is. Can I tell you that Satan will attack your weakest points? 
He will attack where it hurts the worst. Because he's anti-God. But if we will draw closer to God each day, he'll bring us through all that. Satan, and we see that in this book of Job, Satan can't do anything to the Christian unless God allows it. And if he allows it, it's going to be used for the good of the one that's suffering. Because that's the type of God we got. He's a wonderful God, a loving God. Look what Jesus suffered. You know why? It wasn't for his sin. It was for my sin. He went to that old rugged cross. And there he was brutally treated. Marred his face. Probably wouldn't even have known he was a human the way they treated him. And yet, he bore my sins on that old rugged cross. Folks, that's, that's, that's deep and that's real. What he went through for me. What if we could have been there on that day? What if we could have seen what they did to him? Jesus Christ. What would that, how would that have touched our, our lives? Our Christian faith, would we say, I want to curse God and die? Or would we say, Lord God, I thank you for your payment for my sin because I'm a sinner, saved by grace, but I have to fail at times. But I do know this. God is out for our good. When you find hard times coming your way, don't do anything, okay, except go to your knees. Don't let things or people draw you away from God. Go to your knees, confess all to Him, and watch how He works. You'll find God working on your behalf. But if we follow the crowd, say the world, we're going to go against God, God. So we have to put all faith and trust in God. People you meet every day on the streets or wherever, not all of them are that way. They think they can handle their own problems, but they can't. We're too small for the problems of this world. That's why we need Jesus to train us to grow us, to make us into a useful vessel for service for the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we'll do that. We'll find God's best in our lives, our families, because He's a God of love. I'd like to speak to those on Facebook, YouTube, whatever means you're tuning in. And what you've heard here tonight, what you've seen of what Job so much in despair, and yet he would not turn from his God. He would not curse his God. Maybe even if it led to death, he's not going to curse God. Why? Because God is a loving God, he's a merciful God, and he wants the best. If you're going through a hard time right now, why not give God a chance? Why not pray and say, Lord, I don't know... I don't know about life. It's just got me down. The first step, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's what the Bible says. So close your eyes and bow your head and let me lead you in a sinner's prayer. You pray this. Lord God, I know I'm, I'm lost. I'm without Jesus. I'm undone, unclean. And yet the Bible tells me if I will only call upon the name of the Lord, I will be saved. With no doubts, it's a promise that you've given all mankind. So you pray that prayer. Come in my heart, Lord Jesus, and save me. And folks, if you'll pray that prayer, he will not turn anyone away. Because our God is a mighty God. He's a God that wants to save this rotten world. So if you pray that prayer... Let me assure you that you are a Christian because he said if you call up on his name, he'd save you. But make sure you tell someone. Tell us if you will. 
We'd like to be able to help you in some way. And that's what we're here for. And you pray that. In Jesus' name, and let me close out in prayer. Father, we thank you for this time, Lord. This study on Job is very in-depth. Lord, it shows us of a person that went through such hard times. And then he stayed with his God. And thank you for that. That's a, that's a real testimony to us. What we can expect and what a great God we have. And we thank you for it all. And we pray that in Jesus' name. Amen.